helping him learn how to like manage himself, but also defending him from kids who are just really mean. Um, so I think, I, and I'm, and I'm also very aware that he's the only black person in the class. So there's, there's a lot of in things. In the entire class? He's the only one in the, the whole entire class? class. In that class, oh, wow. of like 10 kids, I want to say. Yeah, mm. he's the only black student in that class. No, there's 16 in this class, 16 kids in this class. 16, you said? 16, one six, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's a lot of things uh-huh. going on. <laughs> things. <laughs> Lots of things going on here. Well, like, let's see. Everybody's irritated with Antonio, and I'm like, uh, hold on. I had other questions. I don't know if you answered them on the comments, but um, I, I think you had a similar question listed there. When the students come in, do they get to choose mm. which role they sit at, or is that kind of determined with? So they don't know when I'm doing, so I think one thing that we talked about a lot, uh, you and I, Jamie, was like, when do you do these group roles or when do we not do them? And I decided this year, I'm only going to use group roles when we're doing a really important group activity. And so the, the little sticky dots are always on their desks, but we don't use them every day. So I'm, okay. they sit wherever they want. They sit in that group and they can sit wherever they want in that group, but we don't use the sticky dots every day. So kids aren't usually coming in and going, Oh, I want to be a quarter reporter today okay. or whatever. So they usually just sit in, in a random place on the group. And then, um, they look once they realize, Oh, we're doing a group activity. Then they find out what they are. Cool. Do you do anything strategically around that of like, okay, I know that like this kid who I want to be facilitator is sitting at the red dot. So red dot is facilitator. I haven't done that yet. Okay. No, no. I just usually, where they sit, where they land, that's where they land so far. Yeah. Um, well, let's name some strengths and highlights that we saw in this video and I've seen you start. Um, I think that I'm really, I feel really proud of uh, Alex and I built him up a lot, uh, the student in the middle. Um, as we've gone through the year, built him up a lot in his ability to lead. I think he, he, is a natural leader and he has a lot of leadership skills and I'm trying to help him bolster that. Um, but he does so many things that are fun to watch and it was cool to like look back and see him. I can even just see like video of him posturing and trying to be like, Hey guys, like, you know, like he's, he's very much trying to lead the group, um, and trying to steer them in the right direction. Um, so I like that. Um, I am glad that I gave them, um, the opportunity to use the algebra tiles. I think that that was really helpful and having them write on the desks was really helpful because mm-hmm. they, could, they can all have their own copy of it and just write right on top of it. Um, part of me is wondering whether I should have just had them have one set of algebra tiles in the middle, but nah. um, that, those are the main couple of things that I'm thinking. I like the structure of the activity. I think that doing this as a checkpoint in Hollyhock was really a good structure. Um, and yeah, that's what I got for right now. My computer is about to die and I have okay. my iPad and okay. I'm going to log in on my iPad. So I'm going to try to do it before it dies, but we can keep okay. going. Just okay. let you know if I disappear or something. Okay. Um, Julia and Jamie, what were some strengths and highlights you saw? Um, I was impressed by it. There, so you did the huddle thing, and then um, the girl came back from the huddle and then was like, I've got news. <laughs> and <laughs> the girl's doing it wrong or whatever she said. And I feel like mm-hmm. I've been trying to do the huddle because I think it's a really cool thing. But, like, often the kid comes back and just, like, sneaks back into the chair mm-hmm. and like, nothing went on. And I'm like, hey, you, you, like, talked about something. So I was <laughs> like, well, one, I'm curious about, like, what work you did around that. where she, Or maybe that's just her or whatever. But then I also thought it was cool that she did it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there was so much power in how you did that. And, like, you must word it away. I feel like I never get that reaction. So I was like, <laughs> word it that they feel so excited with the information that they come back with. Um, we try to students just seem like, okay, we need to do this next. Um, 
But then also, I appreciate that in the beginning of the video where you were like, you recognize your own mistakes in front of the students and you're open about that because mm -hmm. that opens up the classroom and allows students to make mistakes too and recognize their own mistakes. Yeah. And I feel like I never did that before, Holly Hawk, so I really like doing that in different ways. I was excited that like they, even though there were some moments of off taskness and some weirdness, um, like for the most part, they were doing what you asked them to do. And like, there was especially one moment in there. I think there was like a 15, 20 second length of time where every student contributed a mathematical idea and like shared their math idea. And I feel like that's huge for ninth graders and five of them and probably kids who haven't done much group work before. Like, it's really cool that this was in the first four weeks of school that like you already have so much of the structures and expectations set up that like, yeah, there's some things to tweak, but like in general, they're, they're bought into the group work. Yeah. I think that that's something, yeah, I think that that's something that I'm a strength that I would see for this year in general is that I have picked the focus and I picked it with Hollyhock and I stuck with it. So I'm sticking with group work. I set up a lot of structures at the beginning of the year. Like Julie's talking about the um, the kid doing the huddle. Like I, I really made huddles feel like if you're a recorder reporter, oh my gosh, do I have a job for you? Like you get to do it. <laughs> and yes. like they stuck to those roles. Like you even noted in the video, like Alex starts to get up and then he's like, no, no, no not me. Job. Yeah, exactly. So. So I think that because they're ninth graders and because they like to feel special, I played that angle. And I feel like they're, they're right. doing, they're into the expectations of group roles. They get the expectation. They have That's awesome. Have some of the expectation. But even at like some is a good starting place to be able to leverage more. All right. I right, assume you had posed a question in your tags. Um, I'm curious about what I could have done to structure this activity more in such a way to support the various learners in this group. Mm -hmm. And then also how to balance so that you're, you have the bandwidth to mo notice what's going on. Is that still the question you want us to take up? Yeah. And even more the first one than the second one, like I'm really interested in structure. So even like when Julia, when we were talking about Jamie's video and we were talking about like what task or what structure, that's why that caught my ear. Cause I'm like, well, I'm thinking about the same kind of idea. I know that yes, we talked about different participation structures, but I'm even talking about a little bit more finely. Like mm -hmm. looking at this task, we know it's a checkpoint task where they have to like check in with me step by step. Um, and then I call a huddle and stuff like that. But what could, what about the task lent itself or didn't lend itself to a productive, like a productive conversation for the most for most of the task time. I feel like there's a lot of off task time and I'm wondering if there's anything about the structure of the task that lent to that, or is it just, do you guys feel like it's just, you know, getting to know the kids and needing to address all these issues or what might've lent to that? Hmm. I feel like I think about this. I feel like I think about this all the time because um, like in Hollyhock where we went through certain tasks and we asked ourselves what made something group worthy. And even when we were trying this for the first time, I remember that we all approached it separately. And then we'd be like, I got an idea. And then someone else would say that they had an idea. And we really just checked in when someone had an idea, but we didn't need each other to mm -hmm. figure stuff out. The only part that we really needed each other for was the fact that it was a challenging mm -hmm. task. So I think that it's, definitely something I'm working on but what I try to do for tasks like that now is give them one worksheet and then make the student who's most off task be the scribe so that I always <laughs> tell our class that that's the only handwriting I should see on this paper if anyone else mm. is handwriting they're going to rewrite it because then that student who has the most difficulty staying on task always has to come back at least to write down the ideas and that even if people are telling them what to write, I think it helps them um, then want to pay attention or figure out, okay, like, why are they writing it this certain way? And they're reading it as they're writing it. Mm -hmm. I try to think about, like, who specifically takes on certain roles. So that's kind of like even what Gita was saying before about being more specific about who is going to be that role 
because maybe I'm trying to think of like what the stick.